Lexi, what did it take for you to get here? It took blood, sweat, and tears. It took sacrifices for me and sacrifices for my family. You know, my mom going straight from work to pick me up and we're driving an hour just for me to go practice, you know. Like people see the end result, they see me getting the freshman of the year and they're like, oh congrats, like I knew you were gonna get it, but people don't see the work and the time and effort you put in to get to this point. And so they see me doing interviews, they see the pictures on Twitter, and they think it's amazing. It's like, well, I've worked for this my whole entire life. My family has also worked for this. And so me seeing that is just validation for all the hard work I've done and making my family proud and showing them that it wasn't a waste, all that time, effort, and money they put into me and my passion. <laughs> What's going on, family? Uh, this is Jonathan Jones, and we are live on location for an episode of Beyond the Ball. And I'm here uh, at Nickel State. And before we got down here, I said, man, I need to reach out to somebody at Nickel State. I need to get connected. I need to see who should I spotlight while I'm down here uh, working with these athletes, with these young leaders. And I looked no further than to Miss Lexi Alexander. Lexi, how we doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, man. So I so I, I went on. I went on like the colonels page. What Cur colonels? <laughs> colonels. Oh, it was. You were laughing. Okay. <laughs> so I looked on the colonels page and I was looking. I was like, man, what? You got you got the freshman of the year and just seeing, just looking at seeing the numbers and I'm like, I gotta reach out to Lexi. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I gotta reach out. Gotta reach out to Lexi. But you're you're not originally from here. Where are you from originally? I'm from Austin, Texas. You're from Austin, okay, mm -hmm. you're from Austin. Well, so from Austin, why did you want to come down to Louisiana? Um, well, I had a tournament here okay. in New Orleans and the head coach at the time here was like, come down for your visit while you're in the States. So I was like, okay, you know, I wasn't really considering it because I didn't want to go far from home. Like I'm yeah. the youngest and the baby of the family, you know, mom was still making me dinner every night, you know, the basics. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I came on my visit, and when I just walked through this campus and I met that coach, it was just like a feeling of home, like the feeling of family, the, the warmth you feel inside, and like you know something's right. That's what I felt while I was taking my tour, and that's when I knew like, this was the place for me. Wow, okay, okay. Hold on, wait, so you say you're the youngest. How many siblings do you have? I have one older sister. Okay, one of, did, did she play basketball also? Yes, she did. She's the reason I still play basketball. Real, talk a little bit more about her. So she is eight years older than me, so of right. course I was always looking up to her. I always wanted to be like her. And she went to a D2 first for basketball okay. in Arkansas, and I thought she was just the most amazing person ever. I was like, wow, like you went to college for basketball? <laughs> um, and she ended up finishing her basketball career at a D3, but um, I actually wore number 21 for her because she wore that number in high school. Mm. Yes. Okay, okay. And I mean, would, like, would you give her any credit for, for how, how dominant you are? Because, I mean, I was looking at some of the stats, and the, the way your stat line stacks up, I was like, wait a minute. I was like, you're, you're an animal out here. Like, I mean, no, seriously. I was looking, I was like, what? Seeing you getting, you know, because getting, getting rebounds is, is get, you got you to be, you, got, you, get, you know, you got to be really aggressive to get the rebounds, right? That, that's, that's the first part. But then, I mean, going and getting the buckets too. So would you give her any credit for her? I can't give her all the credit because you know she got a big head, but I do give her a lot of credit because she toughened me up to be able to fight with these girls down low. She's she was a post too, uh -huh. so watching her do those post moves, those rebounds, that it's what made me who I am today. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Fair enough, fair enough. So okay, so we you know we we had we had a pre pretty good freshman season. Mm -hmm. So like how did, how do you continue to stay sharp and how do you continue to stay you know motivated just day to day. Stay hungry. You know, while I'm sitting, if I want to sit down and watch a movie, there's people out there working out. You know, schools are still scouting me. I still got to get better. I got to improve. I got to expand my game. I can't get too comfortable because I think that's an issue with a lot of athletes to get too comfortable. Wow. So what do you, what do, you do for self? Like, what do you do like to, to, to relax? Like, if you're not, if you're not in the gym, you're not lifting weights, like, what do you, because you, I mean, you got to relax somehow. Relax is good. Um, <laughs> usually, well, right now, I'm watching all 
the March Madness because that's of insane course. right now. Of course. So I usually kick back, watch that. Um, usually do some compression on my legs, you know, <laughs> some active recovery. Yeah. Time relax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, okay, well, since since since, since I know you have a you have you have a respect and you have you have a, a admiration for the game. Like who who else can you appreciate throughout throughout the NCAA? Like who else can you be like? She got game or he got game. Like who who else do you like out there? Uh, that's that's currently at, at your level, like to NCAA. I hate to say it, because I do think she's a big head, but Angel Reese, she's mm. she's killing it. I do think she's a little cocky, but you get to be cocky when you get those numbers like she is, and she's working hard for it. That's fair. That's fair. Anybody else? You give anybody else any, any kudos? Because Angel Reese that does get busy. I was watching her last night, and yeah, she was she was getting some boards. I saw. I was like, man, three of fifteen, but I mean, she got the boards. I was like, damn. And her double double streak—that was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. That was really long, so I I give her the credit right there. Okay. Anybody else? Not that I can think of right now. <laughs> I got you. Okay, fair enough. And I mean, post post to post, so mm -hmm. I I respect it. Okay, so active recovery. Yes. You said you have an appreciation for it from March Madness, and one thing that I I actually can say this year, I've done more. Probably in the past couple of days, because I, I was hanging out with my mom and my uncle, and he's big. He's a big basketball player. Well, when he was in college, he was a big basketball player, big time, and he likes watching March Madness, everything like that. So I was sitting there watching some of the games with him, and and I was watching Caitlin Clark. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Caitlin Clark is ridiculous. And it's like she came out of nowhere. I, I I never heard of it. Like I saw a tweet maybe like a couple of days before. <laughs> saw Steph talking about how she can just shoot it from anywhere, and I was like, who is this? Then I pulled her up and saw she had all the followers. I'm like, who is this? Then I watched her last night get that triple double. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, and everyone talks about the points, but I give her her most credit on the assists. Oh my goodness. They're, they're crazy. Her her core, her core vision out of this world, on top of the fact that she was responsible for contributing up to 70 something percent of the points based on, like, you know, her getting 40 points. Mm -hmm. She had like 12 assists, 10 rebounds. And the way she carries herself on the court, much respect for that. True, she's a, she, she's a she's a she's a true personality, mm -hmm. true personality, true gamer. And then uh, what's the other young lady's name? Van Leaf, Van Lith, Van Lith, <laughs> Haley Van Lith. I think her name is. Plays for Louisville, oh, Louis, Louisville. I know exactly who you're talking about. She has the pigtail. I mean, I like I, I I've heard some people say some things like like I don't like her. She kind of has an attitude. Give people attitude going through the line. She's a gamer too. She got a game. She can play, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, fair enough. Do you, do you think, this might be controversial. Okay. Do you think that women's basketball is more entertaining than men's? In the, Mar in the March Madness, I'm talking March Madness, because the NBA, I mean, the flopping, I'm, I'm done with it. Yes. But, like, March Madness. I might be a little biased because I'm a women's basketball player, I mean, but I do think women's basketball is more entertaining in the fact that it's basketball. I think in men's basketball, it tends to be more jazzy, who can dunk the best, who can have the best move, and women's basketball is basketball. Whoever's most skilled, you know, I just think it represents the sport in a whole better than men's basketball. I've never heard broken down like that. That's fair. Yeah. No, that, that's that's actually fair because it is like you y'all running the plays, doing the sets, make because I mean shooting the three is shooting the three, so you're making you're still making the three. Okay, 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 that's fair, that's fair. Okay, and I'm 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 glad that I actually have sat and watched more women's basketball this year. Okay, it's, I think it's better. I'm not, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to. And then, because I mean, South Carolina. I was watching South Carolina. Dominating. Oh my goodness. They're killing it. That's what I have to win it all. Really? For sure. You think so? Yeah. Coach Dawn? Oh yeah. Coach Bailey? She's taking it all the way. I mean, I. I think they might. I think they might. But the thing that I've been more shocked at, I wouldn't be as shocked if they won again. I would be as shocked. Mm -hmm. I was more shocked to see that, and I, I don't want to offend anybody when I say this, but I think UConn's dynasty has like fizzled out a little bit. I'm happy it happened. <laughs> it sounds bad, but you know, it was always UConn was 
the face of women's basketball in college. Like NCAA, that's, true. that's who you thought of first was UConn. So I think it's time for a new team to step into the light and show that there's other dogs in this this conference. Like we can we can all hoop. That's fair. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So 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 talk to me about since you're so this year this year's freshman year, right? Man, you still got a lot more time. I know. <laughs> I mean, but that can be a good thing, right? I'm excited. Yeah. Well, what are you, what are you most excited about? To see how I develop as a player throughout the years. How do you want to? Where where, where do you want to develop your game most now? Currently, I want to stretch it out a little bit more. You know, okay. teams scout me to be in that pain. So I think if I expand my game and stretch it out a little bit more, we can catch everybody by surprise. Ooh, yeah, like a. Did you ever watch like Kevin Garnett? Oh yeah. I mean him right. He, he was a perfect example. Like right there, mm -hmm. just right at the top of the key. He used to wear that thing out. Kill him. And nobody really. They're like, uh. Because you never know what to expect. Because then either you can go in, you can shoot it. Yeah, you can triple threat it. You just keep them on their toes. They don't know. <laughs> that's that's a good point. Okay, so you want to stretch it out. Okay. So. So you're uh. You, is it a biology? You're a biology major? Yes, but I'm currently switching my major. Okay, well, well talk, talk, talk. Was what you, what you, what you, what you switching to? I'm switching to graphic design, actually, which is kind of like an mm. opposite world. That is, that's, I mean, well, I mean, yeah, yes and no, because on one side, I mean, you're looking at, well, yeah, it is. Because yes, I was about to say uh, graphic design, because I was thinking Photoshop, how you try to get like the measurements and stuff, mm -hmm. the numbers. But biology is like life. Yeah, I went from being in a chemistry lab to in a drawing class for two hours. So it's very opposite semesters for my freshman year. What what, do, what made you want to switch? What, why why the switch? Biology class. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my first semester. I was like, oh, maybe this isn't for me. And I've always loved art. Okay. So I think being able to do that in a professional aspect and do it for a living. I mean, that sounds amazing to me. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Do, do you think, because you, you fought you fought Generation Z, mm -hmm. do, do you think this generation is more so one that doesn't care as much what people think? Like, you're like, I want to do what I want to do, and that's it? 100%. Gen Z is going to do what we want to do, and we're going to bend the rules as far as we need to bend them. Okay. I think once we are the older generation, in this world, it's going to be a totally different world. Really? I do think that. Oh, God. Do, do you think, do you think that we're, do you think the world is going to bend to Gen Z, though? Like, or, or, or do you think it's going to come to a point where it's like, nah, Gen Z, y'all got to do things the way that we say they're supposed to be done? Or it's like, nah, the world's going to bend to us. I think the world's going to try to tell us to do the things that need to be done. But I mean, look at us now. We're already doing our own thing. Because I, I know when, because I'm, I'm, I'm millennial generation, right? And, and I know that when I was like, what, high, high school, school, right? Trying to go get a job and stuff like that. They would say, well, people tell, like, people tell me and my brother, like, you know, you, you don't, don't want to have like the dreads, don't want to have your ears pierced, can't have tattoos, you're not going to get a job now. I've seen people with dreads, I've seen people tatted all down the way, everything pierced, different color hair, mm -hmm. and I'm like, wait, what in the world? And, and these people are getting jobs for like Fortune 500 companies, like, I'm not sure if, if it's Gen Z, or if it's COVID, or if it's just the mix of like people needing people to work in addition to the, the, the Gen Zers are the ones with the experience. It's just like, and, and some, I mean, this isn't a tag against Gen Z at all, by far. <laughs> this isn't a tag, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like, what I've seen, like, the facts. And then it's also, like, the level of education that was required before is not necessarily the same level of education that was, re that's required now. Mm -mm. Wait, what's going on? What's going on, Lexi? What y'all doing? I don't know. It's funny, because I've gotten the same speech from my mom. No, Lexi, you can't dye your hair, because when you want to get a job, no, Lexi, you can't get that tattoo, because when you want to get a job, you can't have it. So I've gotten the same speech. And what did you, you tell her, though? That's the way I got the tattoo. 
Did she know you got the tattoo? Yes, yeah, she does. I get them, well, we compromise. So I get all my tattoos hidden. So when I'm in That's fair. my professional world, you know, they can't see them. I mean, I, I went with that too, but there, there's going to be a point to where to where it's going to start to it's going it's going to start to stretch out like a game. It's going to start to stretch out. Yeah, but I think by the time Gen Z's working, about everyone's going to have a sleeve, everyone's going to have dreads. I think it's crazy. You're going to go to the bank, and your bank is going to have like three of those piercings. Do you think that's going to be for the better or for the worse of the culture? Do you think Gen Z is going to move things forward, or are they going to set us back? Depends what side Gen Z you talk to. Which, which side are you on? I'm on the forward side. I'm on the like environmental side. So I think we should keep our planet green, you know, <laughs> all that stuff. But then there's a side that's like, we just want to party all day. And that that to me is backwards. So it depends on which side of Gen Z you talk to. Are you pa are you passionate about the environment? Like that's something that you're that's like a cause. I took an environment class in high school. Okay, that's how you got into that. I just took it for fun. It's just interesting. I must say, I haven't heard nobody like fight for the environment lately. Oh yeah, I, me and my grandma used to go uh, to protests um, downtown Austin. We walk okay. around for the environment. How has the adjustment been for you being from Austin, Sixth Street, UT Nation, <laughs> Texas Relays, to coming to Thibodeau, Louisiana? And going to school here. It's been ridiculous. It's like two completely different worlds. First of all, the language here. I don't think I'll ever understand it. Some people talk to me still and I just kind of look at them and I smile and nod because I have no clue what they're saying with their accent. And reading stuff, like, go? Like, that doesn't spell go. Like, <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't spell go. No, not at I, can't, all. I can't say that spell go either. But I will say the culture in Louisiana overall is amazing. And the people are much nicer here than they are in Texas, you know. The basic manners, you find it more often here than you do in Texas. Really? Yes, but there's not, it's like I went from driving a car 100 miles per hour to driving like 25 miles per hour in Thibodeau. Like there's just yeah. a lot going on in Texas constantly. Yeah. And here I have to wait like a month if I want something to happen. Is that why you're in the gym so much? Yes. <laughs> Oh man, that's so funny. All right, let, let, me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. We're going to get ready to transition. What is, what's one question that nobody asked you that you wish they would? What did it take for me to get here? Lexi, what did it take for you to get here? It took blood, sweat, and tears. It took sacrifices for me and sacrifices for my family, you know. My mom going straight from work to pick me up and we're driving an hour just for me to go practice, you know. Like people see the end result, they see me getting the freshman of the year and they're like, oh congrats, like I knew you were going to get it, but people don't see the work and the time and effort you put in to get to this point. And so they see me doing interviews, they see the pictures on Twitter and they think it's amazing. It's like, well, I've worked for this my whole entire life. My family has also worked for this. And so me seeing that is just validation for all the hard work I've done and making my family proud and showing them that it wasn't a waste all that time, effort, and money they put into me and my passion. That's real. Man, that's real. Are you, are, are you delving into any of this NIL stuff? Do you, you mess with the NIL or are you like, you don't got time for it? I think it's cool for some athletes, but for me, basketball is in the job. It's just something I really, really love. So I just feel like the deals for some people, it works for them. For me, it's just not, I'm not interested. That's real. Man, okay, fair enough. All right, so now we're gonna, we're gonna transition into the, into the rapid fire Let's go. segment, okay? So this is, I'm just gonna ask you just some random questions and then you just share the first thing that comes to mind, all right? Let's do this. All right, let's do it. Who's the, who's the best dancer on your team? Kate. Kate Manley. <laughs> okay. You laugh like she you like you just got a visual of her dancing. I do because she me and her have dance battles for fun. And this is also a six five post, mind you. And she's break dancing on the floor, spinning around and hitting her little pose at the end. Oh my goodness. Okay. What's your go to show? Currently it's New Girl. 
Okay. I like New Girl. I like New Girl. How far are you in it? Uh, this is my third time watching all seven seasons. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I, I love the episode where it's, it's the Jess birthday episode, mm -hmm. and then they're talking about baking the cake, and then Coach and, and Bishop go at it. They have a competition. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hilarious. Good episode. Hilarious. Do you prefer do you prefer podcasts or audiobooks? Podcasts. What's your favorite podcast? Mine was the Shane Dawson one, but he stopped doing them, so now I'm podcasting. Shane Dawson? Yeah, he's a YouTuber as well. Okay. You don't like any other what, what other podcasts you like? Sometimes me and my mom listen to like mystery podcasts. Those are really the long, popular. long car rides. Okay. Just to see if we can figure it out before they tell us what it is, but we usually don't figure it out. Show us to the what the, the whodunits? Mm -hmm. the, the, the murder ones. That sounds so bad, but no, those are those are like the most popular podcasts. Mm -hmm. Like they're every year most popular ones. Uh, what's your what's your pregame meal? Grilled chicken, broccoli, mashed potatoes. Wow, you're 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 really locked into this life. <laughs> you're really locked into this life. That's crazy. Uh, what what's, what's your go to move? In basketball? Mm -hmm. Probably up and under. Oh man, that's classic. I love it. Unless the rest call me for a travel, then it just gets really bad. But if they don't call me for a travel, we're all good. Don't you hate that some refs will call the will call the travel, but others like no, this is a good move. Yes, that's why I tend to when I see a taller female ref, I usually get happy because they tend to be post when they play basketball, so they understand it's not a travel. So you should get excited when I see it. <laughs> a female ref that's my height or taller. Okay, so now this is the this is the winter circle of the week, right? And this is the part where you get the opportunity to spotlight or just shout out somebody that you feel is doing really dope stuff. They're just amazing. You're co-signing them and you're saying, John, you should interview them next. Who would that person or person be for you? Miss Delaney, 100%. She is a young, young administration member, and she is working so hard, not only for women's basketball, for football, men's basketball, she works in so many sports, and she makes sure, it's, first of all, they work mentally okay, because mental health is a big thing with athletes, and she's one of the people that are like, are you, how are you doing mentally? And on top of that, she's making sure academically we're all good. If you need help scheduling, she's there. And then, as you know, our coach did resign, and she's here making sure that goes smoothly. You know, she's helping find a new coach. Like, she's doing everything plus some more, and keeping a smile on her face and still having cute outfits on while she's doing it. <laughs> if I was doing all that, I'd probably come in the trash bag every day. I wouldn't have time trying to look cute. That's real. That's real. So now we're about to, we're about to close this thing out. We're about to wrap it up, tie it up, put a a ribbon and a bow on it. Oh, but before we get to the before we get to the final segment, uh, please tell people where they can find you, how they can follow you, and connect with you at this time. If you would like to follow me, you can go to my Twitter at Lexi D Alexander, and then my Instagram is an L and then a period, X E Alexander. There we go. There we go. All right. So this is the Dear Student Athlete segment, and this is where you get the opportunity to just encourage a student, a current student athlete, just pour into them, share words of wisdom, whatever you want. You can look at that camera and just tell them right now. Keep grinding. Keep working and don't stop working and believe in yourself. You know, your family, friends, they can all believe in you, but it's not as much as you believe in yourself. There it is. There it is. So that, that's, that's going to wrap us up. Uh, everybody, thanks for tuning in to this live on location episode of Beyond the Ball. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel to where you can get more amazing interviews like this and other additional content. Uh, if you're listening on audio, of course, you can find us at uh, Beyond the Ball with Jonathan Jones. This is where we help student athletes succeed beyond their degree.